much, dear friends. Let me sync this. Make sure you hit share, make sure you comment. Those things help the show very, very much. Um, it wasn't listed in the title, so I'm just going to go ahead and get to it. Um, I was watching the Donald Trump speech before I came on. And listen to what this man said. Very, very intelligent. This is from Right Side Media from February 11th, 2016. And this is a story you haven't heard except from me. Nobody talks about this stuff. Nobody talks about it. So I said to the man, I said, that's because of our politicians. So here's what we do. One of the early things I'll do, we have... He's talking about how to keep drug, drug costs down. Listen to this. More important things. As bad as this is, we have bigger things. But because of this man, it was so great that he told me this, because I didn't know this. I've never heard this. It's inconceivable that we don't negotiate this. Because when you have that... He's saying that we don't negotiate drug prices. That big an order. You should buy this stuff like for 25% what other people are paying, okay? If we negotiate it properly, or even put in a favored nations clause, meaning anybody that bought that drug or that medicine in the world, worldwide, we get the same price less 10%, okay? Okay? Now you see, that is a plan that will help people. Will it help black people? Yep. Will it help white people? Mm -hmm. It would help me a lot. I don't take any drugs, uh, but what I mean is uh, it would. It might, it, Obamacare has destroyed my insurance is what I mean. I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. Um, I had great insurance, now I have horrible insurance. Compare that to what Bernie Sanders said. Bernie Sanders just said that he's going to be the president that will help black people the most because he is going to tax millionaires. Trump's idea helps everyone. Bernie's idea is going to help no one. And let me tell you why. It doesn't matter what race you are, we're all going to get hosed, and here's why. There's a couple whys. First of all, there's nothing wrong with taxing the millionaires their fair share. However, if you're going to make sure you get money from millionaires, you need to make sure that the millionaires cannot move. Outsourcing has destroyed our country, and we know this, it, it's, very, it's rather obvious, this has decimated not only black communities, of which it has, but all communities. There's no jobs for people anymore. And it doesn't matter <clears throat> how affordable you make college, you can give it away free. Some people just don't have what it takes to go to college. I barely made it. I, you know, I, I, what I mean by that is you're working too much, you're doing too much. The way to get through college, whether it's free or not, because you have to work, is to give somebody a decent paying job so that they can go to school and maybe take some time off work when they're in school. It's unheard of today, but it wasn't unheard of in the days of factory jobs. In instances that weren't all that rare, you would take a factory job and then oftentimes you would, uh, when I was growing up this happened to a neighbor of mine, he worked for Timken terrible place, but Temkin, and um, <clears throat> after being there a number of years, he went to college, took a bunch of algebra classes, whatever, and ended up one of their engineers. Um, th you can't do that when they are outsourced. And the reason I mention that is because Bernie's idea is going to raise taxes on the millionaires, the people that hire us, and rather than them paying their fair share, they're going to move. That's going to take the whole job away, which is going to decimate the communities that he's claiming that he wants to help. Now, who is this going to make happy? The bankers, which he claims not to be on the side of. It doesn't make any sense to me at all what he said. Um, Trump's idea on this is to tax the living uh, the hell out of anybody that outsources and attempts to bring it back in. This will stop outsourcing, and this will help all communities. 
and all races. Because we are, after all, supposed to be the United States. You with me? All right, now on to what's in. I just saw that before I went live. Here's what's on to uh, what I've seen and what I put in the title of the show, which is why you tuned in. Blake Neff, Daily Caller. A set of emails has exposed a sordid transactional relationship between Hillary Clinton and the, Clinton and the press. Yeah, she tells them what they have to say. Uh, the emails were obtained by Gawker. Uh, this is a Daily Caller article. Fact Cam shows you the link in it. As part of a large Freedom of Information Act request it made back in 2012. The show, a, they show a 2009 exchange between Mark Ambinder, then politics editor of The Atlantic, and Felipe Reins, a close assistant and advisor to Clinton during her days as Secretary of State. It goes on that Ambinder asked Reigns for an advanced copy of a speech Clinton was scheduled to give at the Council on Foreign Relations. Rather than simply say yes or no, Reigns cut a deal with Ambinder, turning over the speech provided that Ambinder agreed to three conditions. One, put it in your, you in your own voice describe the speech as muscular. You note that a look at the, CF, the CFR seating plan shows that all the envoys, from Richard Halbrook to George Mitchell to Dennis Ross, will be arrayed in front of her, which in your own clever way you can say certainly not a coincidence and meant to convey something. Why does that matter? They're placing people in certain spots in order to place them in your mind as being prudent in whatever area she dictates them to be. Well, you don't get to make up your own mind. It's almost like you're programmed. And that's fine. She can seat people wherever she damn well pleases. But this is giving marching orders to somebody who simply asked for a copy of the speech. Three, you don't say you were blackmailed. And of course, Ann Binder agrees to the exchange. And in his subsequent article, subsequent article right there, shows that he followed Rain's demands to the letter. Clinton's speech is dubbed muscular in the second sentence in the suggestive argument of Holbrook, Mitchell, and Ross is noted immediately afterward. So, she is telling people, pretty much, you're not going to get to interview me. You're not going to get to be the first people to report on something. Unless you do it the way I'm telling you to do it. That's not a free press. I'm sorry, that's not a free press. What if he didn't find the speech muscular? What if he found it, found it pink pansy? She's telling him what to say about the speech. So, you're not getting any kind of commentary like you are here. What you're getting is them telling you what Clinton has already told you the commentary should be. I'm sorry. If, if that's who you want, you go right ahead and vote for her. That's just reason number 5,000 not to. Uh, New American. France to shut down 100 to 160 mosques. War grade weapons found in some written by Saloon Duke. Muslims the world over right now who are not insane have got to be devastated. I'm going to be dead real. The only thing I can imagine is, as a, a Christian myself, <clears throat> a very poor example of one, but as a Christian myself, oh, I should have shut that off long ago. As a Christian myself, I have uh, a dread of the, oh, what are, what, what are they called? The uh, Westboro Baptist Church. Imagine the Muslims right now have to be as upset with the rise of the nutcases as I would be if the Westboro Baptist Church was to take off. And that would suck. Um, this is a mess. I mean, if you go and look in someone's church, you are somehow told that, you know, you're defiling a holy place, you are stereotyping the person, you are illegally profiling them, blah, 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 blah. Listen to this. Um, the mosques that were uh, evident, the French government recently raided, excuse me, Muslim houses of worship in the country and found one-third 
of the quality of war-grade weapons that are normally seized within a whole year. Don't give me this BS that all the Paris terrorists, I call them Paris, were, uh, were native to Paris. Um, that's iffy at best. And it is the indoctrination, even if that does play out to be true, it is the indoctrination of extreme violence and the proclivity to it. Yes, there are nutcase Christians. It just seems like there. if you raid a bunch of churches, you're not going to find this. Just call it a hunch. The mosques implicated themselves because they are run illegally without proper licenses. I think that should be fine. The state has no business in religion. They preach hatred or use a tikifri speech. Hassan al Aloni, one of France's chief imams, told Al Jazeera on Wednesday. Takafari speech is that which levels accusations of apostasy at other Muslims. That is to say that other Muslims should be killed because they're not the right kind of Muslim. Al Aloni also reported that the government will shut down between 100 to 160 mosques. Approximately 5% of the nation's 2,600 total. In addition, authorities searched 2,235 Muslim businesses and homes and arrested 232 individuals. Of course, George W. Bush is calling it the religion of peace. Others call it the religion of the sword. What amazed me was the extreme acceptance of Islam after 9-11. Because it doesn't matter whether or not you believe the government did it or didn't. What matters is that the interest and peak in this religion came to a large degree after what we saw at 9-11. Regardless of who you think is responsible in fixing this. Regardless of who you think is responsible. Why would that be? Wouldn't you think people would flee for that, flee from that after that? It doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, I digress. In the wake of the November 13th Paris jihadist attacks that killed 130 people, however, it was the hardware found that was especially alarming. And here's what they found at churchmilitant.com. Several of these 100-plus mosques have been raided, revealing a staggering, and as a link for it, number of weapons and ammunition on Sunday. Authorities conducted a raid, on a mosque in langy sur marne 18 miles east of Paris, and uncovered 334 weapons and a large quantity of 7.62 millimeter Kalishnikov ammunition along with ISIS propaganda videos. I'm sure you'll find that in your garden variety Greek Orthodox church. Police also turned up recordings on chants that were glorifying the martyrs of jihad linked to the terrorist organization Jabahat al-Nasra, a Syrian branch of al-Qaeda. The chants were found among teaching materials of youth in a madrasa, or private religious school for boys connected to the mosque. And I like this sentence. The, the, a relativism means that every religion is as good as the other. No, that's not true. If one religion, if Christianity says that there is one God revealed in three parts, and that Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost and God are one, and Muslims say that that is absolutely not true, they cannot both be right. I don't care which one you believe, but do not tell me that they are both right. That is absolutely impossible. Well, <clears throat> it goes deeper than that. If you believe that every religion is equal, then when the extreme religions come, and the flavor of the week this time is Islam, when the extreme religions come, they're all equal, right? Maybe they're not wrong. All things are relative. Listen to this. With the West being awash in relativism, and the correlative religious equivalence doctrine, which I just said, I told you what it was, stating that all religions are morally equal, Broaching this topic brings accusations of bigotry or Islamophobia. But truth doesn't bend to political correctness, and there's certainly something going on. Passing Time has a song called There's Something Going On Here. Consider, for instance, a German study released in 2010, there's a link to it on here, and which involved 45,000 young people. 
It found that while increasing religi religiosity among Christian youth made them less violent, increasing religiosity among Muslim ones actually made them more violent. So no, all religions are not equal. They do not all come out the same if you, if you just follow whatever it is you think might be right this week. That's not really the way religion works. And this is from an essay by the Real History of the Crusades, Thomas F. Maiden, Chair of the Department of History at St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri. While Muslims can be peaceful, Islam was born in war and grew the same way. From the time of Muhammad, the means of Muslim expansion was always the sword. In other words, the Muslim religion did not grow because people chose it. The Muslim religion grew because they took the leaders and the people over and either cut their heads off or made them be Muslim. The, what? You don't believe me? Why are these uh, radical Islamists destroying the artifacts of ancient Egypt? Well, before Islam... They worshipped Ra and uh, the, the Horus, the, the, the whole nine yards. I, I'm, I'm not an expert on uh, Egypt, Egyptology or anything. But, you know, they would stuff the chaotic packets inside the mummies. And Why do you think they suddenly quit worshipping Ra and became Islamists? Because one day someone told them about Muhammad and they all said, yeah, we're just going to abandon the religion that we've had for thousands of years. Or do you think they had their throats cut and were dominated into it? Because that's what happened. Mohammed was not able to spread his religion unless people were forced to do it exactly what you're seeing with ISIS today. And it is a different religion than what most Islamists believe. Otherwise, ISIS would not be killing other Islamists. I get it. I'm not saying they're all terrible. I'm saying a large number are. Muslim thought divides the world into two spheres. The adobe of Islam and the, uh, the abode of Islam and the abode of war. Christianity, and for that matter, any non-Muslim religion, that would be all you tree huggers on the West Coast, that too, has no abode. That would be you. Christians and Jews can be tolerated within a Muslim state under Muslim rule. But in traditional Islam, Christian and Jewish states must be destroyed and their lands conquered. I didn't make it up. Don't blame me. Friends, uh, cbssocial.com. This is brought to you by Change Transportation. If you are in Ohio, go on uh, changetransportation.org and look them up on Facebook. You're gonna, not going to believe the deals you get. Now, you've got to say that you heard about it from the correct views or you're not going to get a deal. But it's not within a 50-mile radius of Canton anymore. It's all of Ohio. Um, cbssocial.com. Meet the 100-year-old snow shoveler who's going viral. Check this dude out. I love him. Um, Minneapolis, a Twin Cities great-grandfather is getting a lot of attention for a video showing him shoveling his neighbor's sidewalk. I've always been active, always doing something, St. Paul resident Richard Mann said. He would say he's quite the man. Listen to this. The 101-year-old has learned a thing or two about work ethic over his long life after his father died when he was but four. He took care of the work around the house <clears throat> and helped his single mom. Snow shoveling was one of his duties, and I was a boy. It was an automatic thing for me to do, more or less do the man's job, he said. The job never got him much attention until now, nearly a century later. The video showing man shoveling his neighbor's snow has gone viral. The neighbor is overheard in the video, summing the situation up perfectly. This is an inspiration for a lot of people to get up and get out and do something. The video has 334,000 hits. Who cares? That's why I think people appreciated the video of him, because there are so many things going on, and you know people are not being kind to each other. Margot Mann, which is Richard Mann's daughter, said, <clears throat> Any kindness is key. 
101 years old. Why don't you look at that? Look at him. There he is. That's awesome. Um, ready to go for him. He says he plays golf whenever he gets a chance. He's 101. He said he's had quite a life. And he swears by bacon and eggs for breakfast every day. He lost his first wife to cancer and his second wife to Alzheimer's disease. 101. Way to go for him. Uh, make sure you uh, look up the work of Sticker Junkie. Go to StickerJunkie.com. When you check out, type in Correct Views. Type in The Correct Views. Make that your promo code. You'll get amazing stickers. Stickers that look like that right there. And you'll get a great discount by typing that in. A mysterious virus kills 20 Ukrainian soldiers. Separatists blame U.S. lab. This is not good. The Daily Sheeple. Beginning in December, reports emerged regarding a strange new virus infecting military personnel in Easter in Ukraine, as if they don't have enough problems. To date, nobody really knows what the strain is, and the Western and mainstream media has neglected to report on it. A recent update from Donbass, watch how you say that, International News Agency, which appears to be a pro-Russian separatist website, <clears throat> suggests that the virus has an American origin. Of course. The strain, which has since been dubbed the California flu, has reportedly killed 20 Ukrainian soldiers and hospitalized 20 more. The virus causes a high fever, seems immune to modern medicine, and the infected uh, that die typically succumb within two days. That's pretty grim. Immune to medicine and dead in two days. How much medicine could you have even tried in two days? According to Vice Commander of the Russian Separatists, the virus was leaked from a research lab near the city of Kharkov, which is run by U.S. military experts. Is there any proof at all other than this Separatist saying it? Because... While it might be cool to blame America, <clears throat> and God knows we've done enough to deserve it, if you are just slandering your enemy for the hell of it, you're going to kill more people because we're going to look for the, uh, the path of the disease differently than if we had the truth of where to actually follow it and follow its trail. Pathology can be a real pain in the ass, and these people, if they're lying, could really be blowing it. Hopefully, you know, hopefully this gets under control. It says, regardless of its origin, the virus has started to infect the civilian population as well, <clears throat> so it's not confined to just the barrack um, setup. It's making its way throughout the Ukrainian city of Kramp-Orsk, C-R-A-M-A-T-O-R-S-K, you try it. Doctors on the Ukrainian side of the border have failed to identify the viral strain because the lab they need resides in separatist territory. In other words... They can't quit killing each other long enough to let the virus stop killing them. Sometimes you wonder if all humanity, Ukrainian, whatever, I mean, you know what? If we're just signing our own death warrant. Doctors on the Ukrainian side of the border <clears throat> have failed to identify the viral strain because the lab they need resides in separatist territory. If this virus is real and the current casualty rates are accurate, that it would have a mortality rate of just over 1%. This would make it about half as bad as the Spanish flu of 1918, but significantly more lethal than the ordinary flu virus. Very bad news there. And friends, the Dundee of the day is here. Now, I want to say something as we do this. <clears throat> Top of the month is late because I had a cable die. And now that I, I should have had this done long ago, it's the freaking 12th. It's probably not going to get done now until Monday, which uh, of course will be, I don't even know, of course, I don't even know, which will be Sunday. Um, no, Sunday, uh, 15th. Uh, 15th most likely. So I'm giving you two dumpties today to tie you over, tied you over, and reminding you've got one more chance. Just one more chance to go and uh, vote for the dunce cap of the year. And uh, that means you need to pick which of the stories I gave you which were the dumbest and let me know which ones you pick. It's dated, uh, just type in the correct views, dunce cap of the month, 1716. Which you vote in because I'm going to be doing um, the dunce cap of the month where we mail a dunce cap. We've mailed them to the FBI, we've mailed them to the Pentagon, we've mailed them to the White House. Um, if they earn it, they get it. Police stations, judges, average Joes, you earn it, you get it. The drummer from MIA, 
gross, crazy hag. Um, we're going to do the dunce cap of the month, and we're going to announce, we're giving away very, very nice things for whoever wins. So you're going to want to vote. I'm warning you, you're going to want to vote. Double dumpties for Canada here. I love Canada. I love Rush. I really love Skinny Puppy, but I'm sorry, Canada, you, you dumbed up twice. Globalnews.ca. Canada sells off large chunks of gold if it's gold reserves. What's funny about this, not how ha, ha funny, if you're in Canada, you're going to cry. The American dollar is set up for destruction. The bank bailouts have not worked. We are looking at unemployment rates that have to be lied about in order to be packed about in any logical way. The real unemployment is somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. The dollar is set to have a crash worse than 08 because of the actions that were not fixed in 08 but already inv uh, invigorated by um, quantitative easing. The dollar is going to crash, the gold is going to go up, and Canada is selling its gold. Why is it selling its gold? To buy dollars. The government of Canada sold off large chunks of its gold reserves in recent weeks, continuing a pattern of moving away from the precious metal as a government asset. Um, Previous version of the story reported half of the gold reserves have been sold off in early 2016, leaving 1.7 tons. Those numbers were based on International Monetary Fund statistics. Um, according to the International Monetary Fund, uh, Canada has three tons of gold reserves as of late 2015. And they're saying that when Nixon took us off the gold standard, gold was no longer considered a currency. So what they're going to do is buy American currency. This is going to happen, and the price of gold is going to go through the roof. The price of the dollar is going to crash like the candidacy of Rand Paul, unfortunately. I liked him. And you have just lost an epic amount of money. These are your world leaders, especially poor Canada, but all of us. These are our world leaders, okay? The other dumb -dee, dumbass, the truth revolt. Trey Sanchez writes, Turns out, Kids Choir sang an Islamic victory song against the infidels while welcoming refugees. What's that mean? They sang a song to people of the Islamic faith that is about killing the people of the West. As the Islamic people were coming to the West. If you didn't speak the language, you would think that they were singing you a song of surrender and you wouldn't know why. In December, nearly 300 Canadian elementary students performed an original choir piece of a traditional Islamic poem dubbed the Arabic Welcome Song. <clears throat> Obviously, that's all they listened to.